Okay, so let's talk about M350 first. Um, we're going to cover the product introduction and uh, do a later product comparison between the M350 versus the M300. And we're also gonna do uh, application scenario just to cover what M350 is capable of and to talk about RTK, uh, or excuse me, M300 and M350 compatibility, because um, after all, these two drone platforms uh, looks very similar. And last but not the least, we'll also be talking about uh, the care plan for the M350. All right, so let's look at some general updates as well as the key updates as for the M350. So we'll notice some very familiar numbers, including 55 minutes maximum flight time, which is same as the M300. But the IP rating for the M350 has been improved to IP55 uh, compared to M300's IP45. The FPV camera has been improved as well. Uh, resolution is now higher to full HD, and it supports nighttime vision camera as well. Um, we have done the optimization work for the FPV camera on the M350, so now the drill performs better at nighttime, be able to see under low light condition, similar to M3, uh, Matrice M30. Same 2.7 kilogram maximum payload capacity. Um, that is the performance of the aircraft platform. Uh, but now moving to the transmission, M3, M350 now supports the Oculus Think 3 Enterprise version transmission system uh, compared to M300, which was uh, Oculus Think 2 Enterprise and now supports triple OHD video downlink with two remote controller. And the maximum transmission range has been improved to 20 kilometers. Now has two, or excuse me, four antenna designs on the drone. And now supports the remote controller plus, RC plus. With a seven inch display, IP54 rating, and has, I, uh, has the uh, Pilot 2 building. The new battery system is another great update of this platform. Now we have released DB65 along with the M350 RTK. Extend the charge cycle from 200 times to 400 times, and the battery station is also redesigned. We'll be covering these in detail later. First, uh, it is the same familiar Matrice platform, which is very doable outdoor with all kinds of weather condition. 12 meter per second wind resistance speed, uh, that is same as the M300 and IP55 rated uh, for the aircraft. And previously, if you notice, the M300 is not actually IP rated when it's uh, unfold, uh, excuse me, when it's folded. But now the M350 is IP rated even when it's folded. 7,000 meters or seven kilometers maximum flight height altitude and negative four degree Fahrenheit to 122 degree Fahrenheit operation temperature range. The new arm lock indicator is now added to the M350. So if the arm is not locked properly, uh, we will have a use no notification popped up in the Pilot2 software to notify the user. And this new lock mechanism would prevent user to over tighten the uh, drone arm. The night vision FPV camera is now able to detect and clearly see objects even at night with no light condition. Um, so this is extremely helpful when you want to check your surrounding at night uh, with not, without with a poor ambient light condition. 
obstacle avoidance. So M350, again, supports the same six directional sensing and positioning system. So uh, this is achieved by the visual vision and the infrared sensing system array and provide omnidirectional sensing. And for thinner projects such as power line, uh, we also have CSM radar uh, supported for the M350 to detect thin objects at a close range. Uh, this applies to uh, scenarios where you like to fly the drone closer to the objects, but still want to make sure the uh, drone is safe when flying close by these objects. And this also works great under uh, low light condition. <clears throat> so again, uh, because this is coming from the Matrice family, the system is designed uh, with redundant design. Um, so we have uh, dual sensing arrays uh, that to ensure if one set of the sensor failed, the other would also keep the drone operating. Transmission. So currently the M350 is using the most latest uh, transmission technology we have, which is Occupant 3 Enterprise. Um, transmission range is up to 20 kilometers or 12.43 miles. Uh, has improved antenna inf interference algorithm. So compared to the M300, it will provide more stable connections between the drone and the remote controller and supports triple channel full HD uh, live feed when using two remote controllers. And in addition, we now support 5.2 gigahertz transmission channel uh, or transmission range available in uh, your regions. And based on the location of the operator, uh, the drone would smartly adjust its, uh, its uh, transmission um, range to, to, um, to have the system adapt the local country um, regulations. For antenna designs, we have two additional antenna now on the back of the aircrafts to provide more stable connections. And um, the remote controller is now RC plus, which can provide um, uh, more stable connections between the drone and the uh, remote controller and also uh, with the better antenna design and a more advanced transmission system, the media, media download speed is now twice as much compared to the previous generation, which was the M300 system. The RTK module, as well as the GNSS chipset, is also upgraded. We have the new GNSS chip now supports um, more frequencies or more more frequency bands, including the GPS L5 frequency band, as well as Beidou B3 frequency mm -hmm. band. So this means under the same condition compared to M300, M350 can receive more satellites, which provides better um, GPS reception. And the new RTK module, um, now would converge the uh, aircraft position a lot faster compared to M300 because now it supports uh, more frequency uh, bands and it would be able to get more satellites out on the field. You'll be able to notice some visual difference between the M300 and the M350 uh, based on the antenna design. The upgraded battery systems. Uh, we have a new battery part uh, which uh, would support both M300 as well as M350. Or what we call it is TB65. Um, and compared to TB60, it is 400 charge cycles compared to uh, 200 cycles on the TB60. And 
with the better cooling design, the aircraft is able to charge, um, charge, start charging itself without taking too long to cool down the temperature. So under the ambient temperature around 100 or excuse me, 98 degrees Fahrenheit, the TB65 battery can charge without any issue. And when the temperature is above 50 degrees Celsius, um, you will need to wait about 15 minutes uh, to get the, air, the battery to cool down before charging. And the TB65 battery also supports self-discharge and we have redesigned the uh, battery station as well. Uh, now you can easily manage all the batteries inserted in the base uh, in, in the uh, battery station and adjust the self-discharge days. Uh, you'll be customized how many days you want to program these batteries to discharge. So based on the use scenarios and use frequency, you'll be able to adjust that directly from the pilot app uh, and uh, in the pilot app, yes. For the BS65 battery station, uh, it is also re redesigned. Um, it is a charging station for the batteries and it is the uh, only way to charge these uh, BS65 batteries. And the BS65 uh, battery stations also support charging the TB60 batteries. So old M300 batteries can be charged use this base station, excuse me, this battery station as well. And this battery station has additional USB-C charging port that can be used to charge up your remote controller. Um, but generally, it supports charging uh, two battery uh, flight batteries or a pair of flight batteries, one remote controller batteries, and one remote controller at the same time. And uh, the the battery indicator is also relocated from the side um, to the bottom of the battery uh, of of the uh, of the battery. So you'll be able to view the battery level from the back now, which is easier. Um, and we have different charging modes. We have three charging modes, which is the standard charging mode, which would charge up the battery uh, to 100%. And we also have easy or ready to fly mode, which would only charge up to 90% uh, percent and would, also, would, would keep all the batteries at 90%. So this is recommended for uh, frequent flyers or for a project that consistently needs you to be up in the air. And we also have storage mode, uh, which will keep all the battery levels around 50% for long term storage. Um, similar, if you have uh, flew the M30 before. This is very similar to the design with the uh, M30 drones. Uh, battery station as well as the aircraft carry uh, cases are also designed, redesigned. Now we have four wheels on these two cases. Uh, they're extremely easy to move uh, and compared to the old M300 cases, um, these are smaller. So the M3 50 carry case, it's about 31% smaller compared to the uh, M300 carrying case. And also, I forgot to mention the BS65 battery station. Also, you can fit uh, four sets of flight batteries there. That's eight batteries in total, uh, as well as four remote controller batteries directly in the case. And payloads. Uh, maximum payload capacity is still 2.7 kilogram. Um, we support uh, up to four uh, payloads at the same time. That is two payloads on the bottom, one payload on top, as well as additional SDK payloads uh, using the e-port. The e-port is the new generation of open interface on the DJI Enterprise drones to replace the old uh, PSDK or OSDK uh, port. 
the pain definition is exactly the same. Um, so for developer, it's extremely easy to um, proceed and adapt. And um, the ePort supports both functionality of uh, uh, OSDK as well as PSDK. That means you can now insert a PSDK payload to the ePort, which was at a location um, previously on the M300 not supported, which was only on SDK. On the DJI side, all existing payloads um, out available will be supported uh, after the firmware update. That includes H20 series, uh, also H20N, uh, P1, and L1, they all support it on this new M350 RTK platform. And for third party payload options available, uh, we also have uh, these payloads supported um, if the Skyport is version two. And if you're not uncertain whether your third party uh, SDK payloads will be supported with the M350. Uh, we highly recommend to check with the payload vendor uh, for more detail because um, currently all third party payloads of the M300 should work uh, without any um, adjustments and have them adapt on the M350. But some third party SDK payloads may need to have their firmware or uh, PSDK version upgraded in order to work with the M350. And the uh, accessory part, accessory part, the DJI RC Plus now came with the M350 platform. Uh, you're now getting a seven inch uh, screen with uh, over 1,000 nit brightness, IP54 rated, and uh, speed is a lot faster compared to the M300 remote controller. Uh, it is now eight core, about four times GPU power and seven times, excuse me, four times CPU power and seven times GPU power uh, compared to previous comp uh, remote controller. So now SDK or mobile SDK application can be run smoothly and directly from the uh, RC Plus controller. Battery life with one WB37 is 60, uh, six hours, and the battery is hot swappable. Uh, CSM radar, same, available for the M300, now it's available for the M350. And we also have the propeller slightly redesigned. So we have a new part number for the propeller uh, that includes the both low noise propeller as well as high altitude propellers with a, a slightly firmer uh, material that to extend the propeller lifetime. And the noise of these propeller has been reduced slightly compared to the old M300 propellers. I will cover this part in the compatibility um, part between the M300 as well as the uh, M350 in accessories later. And software-wise, um, Pilot 2 application will be the flight controller application. Flight Hub 2 will be supported. Um, Terra software, obviously. Uh, and the thermal analysis tool will be support these, this uh, flight platform without any issue. And extensibility, PSDK, which now all, uh, merged with OSDK, uh, is of course supported for the flagship platform. Mobile SDK and the cloud APIs are also supported for this platform. Security and compliance, um, the M350 is remote ID compliant, and we have uh, multiple functionality to ensure the data is secure. And we have data encryption available. Um, so this would encrypt 
all the data within the SD card. Um, so when you set it up, you will need to enter a security code in order to access all the media stored within the um, M350 payload. We have a local data mode, which can be set up and have the system runs completely offline without any internet connectivity. And we have uh, encryption on the video transmission, and we support a private deployment with our cloud API. And for the Euro, um, we uh, a, a, the the M three fifty is a C three mark marking. And uh, additional notes here is the M three E, which is Mavic three Enterprise series and uh, Matrice M30 series would also be supporting the C2 marking within this year. <clears throat> and we have two versions for the M350. Uh, previously, we have uh, multiple versions. We have a North America version for the M300, which um, you may know the uh, M300 North American version would not work outside Canada. United States and Puerto Rico. Um, but this time with the M350, we have a general version can fly anywhere except China. Um, this will be the version uh, we'll be using in United States and uh, North America in general. And within the box, we have the M350 aircraft, landing gears, and two 2210S propeller. Uh, and the remote controller, which is the RC Plus, and the carry on case. And we have additional battery station battery. Um, it's in the it's in the different package. Okay, so let's do a quick product comparison between the M350 and the M300. Um, as you can see, I have some specs laid out over here and compare between two uh, aircrafts. The M350 RTK, which is upgraded version, uh, would have a better FPV camera, which supports night vision now. Um, better IP rating uh, on the aircraft. GPS, GPS frequency band now supports GPS L5 frequency band and Beta B3 frequency band. Now the M350 also supports the arm lock indicator to show user whether the lock is locked in place. And transmission is improved from OcuSync 2 Enterprise to OcuSync 3 Enterprise. Two transmitting, four receiving. Maximum transmission range extended to 20 kilometers. Okay. Uh, now we can talk about some application scenarios, um, but you could probably imagine uh, the M350 RTK, the use scenarios will be the same as the M300 RTK scenarios. And because the M350 RTK is being able to achieve all the tasks M300 can. High precision, the has the RTK building, so time sync feature and um, and precision RTK systems are supported for this platform. Combining with L1 and P1, you'll be able to obtain great results with this platform, just like how you would with the M300. Synchronizations, um, the M350 will support the uh, Flight Hub 2, which you can easily draw annotations and plan your operations um, and synchronize the data you collected or uh, assigned to the ground team, which has the M350 in order to quickly um, inspect and quickly synchronize the data between the ground team and, uh, uh, and uh, Flight Hub 2 users. Flight Hub 2 users can also assign commands to the ground pilot uh, for them to uh, have a closer look and 
Fly Hub 2 would also support live stream, um, which can view what's currently happening on the site. Uh, we have automated inspection. Um, we support the live mission record with the H20 series, which can generate a flight route to capture the data you want to and over um, over many, many, many times. And because of the uh, AI technology we, uh, we involved in this platform, the drone is able to capture the same structure and locate the same structure every single time based on different weather, the camera will be able to adjust uh, uh, its settings to be to ensure the structure is captured accurately and clearly. Um, let's talk about the compatibility because these two platforms look very similar between the M300 and M350. Um, many, many accessories are actually cross compatible. Um, so on the payload side, the M350 uh, no longer supports the Z30, XT2, and XTS. And for the H20 series, uh, P1, L1, H20N are all supported. Uh, CSM radar accessory is supported. Uh, TB60 batteries, you can use those with the new M350 RTK. And TB65, you can use the new batteries with the old M300 RTK. Accessories uh, on the propellers are slightly different. Um, for the low noise propellers, which is 2110S propellers, you can use this propeller with the old M300 as well. And for the uh, old propellers, 2110 low noise propellers, you can use that on the M350 as well. The only difference is the high altitude propeller for the M300, which was 2195. Uh, that cannot be used with the new M350. That's the only propellers that not work does not work with the M350. Uh, RTK upward gimbal mount, uh, gimbal bracket, uh, all supported with the new drone. DJI DRTK2 mobile station would work with the M350 RTK as well. Uh, we do not recommend um, to change uh, to pair propellers. Um, and mixing use of the TB65 battery with the TB60 batteries is also uh, prohibited. Um, do not mix the TB65 with TB60, and do not mix use of these propellers, and make sure um, the propellers are all either 2110S, 2112, uh, 21. 10 with the new platform. Do not mix these propellers, although they look very, very similar. You'll be able to find the model uh, of these propellers on the on the blade, on the propeller blade uh, labeled. And uh, you may notice that some components need to be updated in order to work uh, between two platforms, such as the battery, um, such as uh, the payload and we'll provide detailed instruction for user to update these components correspondingly. So if user would like to have their existing components uh, work with the new M350, they will need to follow up our upcoming update uh, procedure uh, in order to have these system work together correctly. Uh, we have a detailed instruction on how to update these components uh, one at a time there's a sequence requirement. Uh, so please stay tuned on that. Uh, battery charging station, <clears throat> TB60 battery charging station would work with both TB60 and TB65 batteries. And similarly, BS65 
battery charging station will work with both battery models also. Okay, so make sure the TB60 battery station uh, is up to date uh, in order to for it to work with the TB65. Okay, so uh, that was everything about the M350. Moving on, I would pass the microphone to Oli, my colleague from uh, uh, after sales, and he'll be talk about the uh, enterprise care plans for the M350 RTK. Thank you. So um, I'm Oli, and good morning, everyone. Hope everyone can hear me clearly. Uh, I'm from After Sales North America. Today we'll be talking about the DJI Care Enterprise and Maintenance Program for the new Matrice 300 RTK. So first, uh, let's look at some of the different versions of DJI Care Enterprise. It looks a little overwhelming, but it's very similar to our uh, Matrice 300. Um, so there's basically two service plans available. One is the Enterprise Basic and the other one's Enterprise Plus. So for Enterprise Basic, you can choose to buy one year plan or two years plans. So similar to the other ones. And the service regions available are US, Canada, UK, and new countries, et cetera, all listed here. And this year we also include Mexico as one of the new service regions. So you'll be able to um, use the service from there. And so for the one year plan, there will be two low, uh, low price re replacements. Um, so similar to our you know, DJI Care uh, Express, and there will be no battery battery replacement or any factory maintenance, which we will talk about it later. Um, the price for the basic plan, one year basic plan will be 10% of the product uh, retail price. And you got also an, get an option to renew the one year plan to a two year plan, which you will pay additional, uh, you know, 9% of the product retail price and you get one more replacement and one year extended warranty. So for our two-year plan, uh, which you will buy in the beginning, um, you pay a little bit less than the one-year plan plus the renew plan, which is 15% of the product RRP, and basically equivalent to 45% discount on basic renew. You get three low price replacements, so two plus one, and one-year extended warranty as well. Um, so notice that uh, the scope of extended warranty period service, uh, the no, there's no extended warranty period service available in the EU and UK, but for US, that will be available because EU and UK already come with two-year warranty. And uh, the other option we have is DJI Care Enterprise Plus. That's a more kind of comprehensive DJI Care plan. So on top of the, you get unlimited free repairs and replacement services within the coverage amount. So for the first year, uh, you will get also two battery, free battery replacement. And notice that for the battery replacement, um, it's up to two uh, within a year, regardless of whether the battery is you purchase our original or not. So you can purchase a battery later. It's just in, in total, you can have two battery replacement, two free battery replacements. And we also have factory maintenance program, which I will talk about a little later, uh, but you also get one year, uh, one free standard maintenance uh, services for uh, if you purchase the DJI Care Enterprise Plus. Uh, I also want to notice that uh, since the care service is tied to the aircraft, to exercise, exercise the battery replacement benefit, uh, you will need to send a battery spec along with the aircraft. So if you only send the battery back separately, it will recognize as a regular battery return and may, may be priced or accordingly. So if you have Unless you have a special situation that requires requires you to send a battery separately, please communicate uh, in advance uh, on a case by case basis. But in general, please send a battery with the aircraft to use the benefit. And uh, you know, the second year we also have the new for uh, the DJI Care Enterprise Plus. Uh, you get you know another year of unlimited free repairs and replacement services. Uh, you get additional two free uh, battery replacements, and you pay a little bit more than the first year. You can pay 24% of the product RRP. And uh, the factory maintenance, uh, so currently it's not available in Mexico and South Korea, and there's only one-time basic maintenance for Japan. So that's something to notice. 
So next page, please. Okay, so um, now we're gonna talk about the enterprise maintenance program. So this is kind of like a tune-up program uh, to make sure that your, your drone is serviced well and, and you know good to go every time. Uh, so the currently available regions are listed uh, USA, Canada, Australia, EU countries, et cetera. Um, so no, so Japan is kind of a little bit different and there's no South Korea and Mexico. So we have three tiers, the basic plan, center plan and premium plans. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, when you go to buy tune-ups, you have different services, maintenance type. So the basic plan is basically just like a deep clean, you know, parts in inspections, some updates and calibration of the basic functions. We recommend uh, either you reach a flight time of 150 hours or six months, whichever comes first uh, to use this maintenance type. Um, and then the next tier will be the standard plan. On top of the basic plan, you also uh, get some easily worn parts replacement. And we will recommend uh, that for 300 hours or one year, whichever comes first. And then last but not least, we also have the premium plan, which includes the standard plan plus uh, any propulsion system replacement. So it's like more comprehensive, you know, tune-ups and replacement. And we will recommend that services for um, if you have flight time of 900 hours or three years, whichever comes first. Uh, for Japan, we currently only have basic plan and premium plan available. Um, and the flight time is recommendation is slightly different because of the situation and conditions of different regions. Um, and next page, please. So in order to uh, apply for the maintenance program, you will go to uh, enterprise.dji.com uh, and then you can go to the DJI Drone Maintenance Service official webpage to apply. Uh, here in the, listed in the screenshot here, maintenance application. Uh, you will enter the maintenance code and send the product back to us. And once you, if you purchase the uh, free maintenance service provided by the DJI Care Enterprise Plus, uh, you will contact the dealers or visit the DJI official website and fill in the uh, DJI Care Factory Maintenance Service application as listed before. Uh, and then there will be some FAQs, uh, so frequently asked questions in the maintenance service request page. Here you can see any questions you have, whether what is the service process like, what is, how do I purchase the maintenance service, how do I obtain the code, stuff like that, you can find it online. Uh, the free maintenance service should be used within the service period of DJI Care Enterprise Plus. So if you have the peer program, please use that when you have it. And uh, that sums up uh, the uh, care, it's, uh, that's it.